Well, um, tonight we're still continuing the topic that we started about courage. We're talking about courage to serve God. And so we want to continue with it. Like I said, I'm just doing a topical study, taking a break from the Bible, from the books of the Bible. But I, we talked last week about courage to stand for God. And so tonight, Bible study, we want to talk about courage to take action. Because there are times when God wants us to take action, and we need that courage to do that. We need that courage to do it, and so we're going to focus on, on that tonight. And so let's uh, look to the Lord in prayer. Who wants to pray tonight? Anybody want to pray? Nobody want to pray? Okay, I'll pray then. <laughs> Father, thank you tonight for this Bible study. Thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to be here in your house. We believe in the power of of the Word of God and of the Holy Spirit. And tonight we're asking for your help, ask for grace and mercy to teach the Bible, to understand the Word of God. And I pray, Lord God, that you can use this for your glory to encourage all of your children to be courageous, to be courageous and to stand for you and stand with you and be the Christian that you want us to be. Blessed accomplish your will tonight, I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, so we're talking about courage, having that courage to be the Christian that God wants us to be. And uh, we shared last Bible study how a lot of people, or a lot of, a lot, a lot of times we were hindered. The statement was the kingdom of God on earth suffers because the people of God lack courage to do what he wants them to do. And that is so true. When we don't have the courage to be the voice that God wants us to be, then the enemy is winning, right? Every time the preacher is afraid to tell people the truth, then the, the, Satan is winning. Every time the Christian is afraid to share the truth of the gospel with people, then the enemy is getting the upper hand. And so we got to have that courage to stand with God and for God and and have the understanding that, you know, <laughs> I don't know if it's original or not, but I made a statement and I, I stand by it. And I don't know, maybe I'm sure somebody said it before. <laughs> People like to talk about being on the right side of history. I like to be on the right side of eternity. <laughs> All right, I don't want to be on the right side of history and the wrong side of eternity. I'd rather be on the wrong side of history and the right side of eternity. And so that takes courage to stand up for what is right and to be the Christian that God wants us to be. And so it takes courage to do that and, and to have that ability to stand with God. And we use how the apostles, the Bible said, they didn't take knowledge. They took knowledge that they'd been with Jesus, but it wasn't because of anything that they shared knowledge-wise or any miracle that they did or anything like that. It was the boldness of the apostles. They were uneducated men. They were fishermen. They were not schooled in the finest institutions of that day. They're just ordinary fishermen, ordinary men that Jesus called and filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said that when they did the work of God with courage and boldness, people took knowledge. They said, wait a minute, these guys... These guys, they've been with Jesus. And so when you, and that's what tonight's Bible study is going to be focusing on, where does courage come from? And it comes from that same statement, right? They've been with Jesus, right? They've been with Jesus. When we have been with Jesus and we're in the presence of God and we're connecting with God and walking with God and talking with God, that's where great courage comes from. It comes when we've been burning in the presence of the Lord. And so that's what, that's what it took from those guys. It said they, they took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. And we talked about uh, courage speaks about the heart, the inner strength and determination. It speaks about the willingness for someone to speak their mind and to be able to, to not be afraid to represent God. And to stand with God. And so we have to have that kind of a, that kind of a personality, that kind of a, 
um, mentality as a Christian is, uh, you know, I can't, I can't be silent when God wants me to speak. Or I can't just, um, you know, and of course, you know, we speak everything in God's time, <laughs> right? In God, when God opens a door, you know, let's do it, Lord. You know, sometimes we don't want to speak ahead of time. We don't want to jump the gun before God. But there will be time when God will look to you and me, and somebody may, want, may need to know the truth. And that truth may seem as something that may offend them or stir them up on the inside or get them mad about something. And that truth about God may go contrary to what that person been taught all their life or belief, but God may put his finger upon you and cause you to be the one that will speak for him. That takes courage. That takes courage, and we have to be willing as a Christian to be God's voice, to speak for him, to stand with him, to tell that person in love, as Jesus did when the rich young ruler came to him and wanted to know, what must I do that I may inherit everlasting life? And the Bible said Jesus loved him, but he told him exactly what he needed to do, right? Because after Jesus told him to go and sell all that you have, right, give it to the poor, take up your cross, and come follow me, he did not like that. He was mad. He was upset. He probably was sorry he asked. <laughs> he probably was kicking himself. Why did I go and ask Jesus this question? But you see, Jesus didn't hold back from him. He told him, even though he, it, 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 it offended him, nevertheless, the Lord loved him and with, with, with a loving heart told him the truth. You just need to deny all, take up your cross, and follow the Savior. And so tonight we want to look at courage. Not, we talked about courage to stand with God. Tonight, Bible study is about courage to take action. We take action to, to be what God wants us to be. And I want to open with this verse in the book of 1 John. This is where I left off last time. I didn't share this verse. But 1 John chapter, nine, or chapter 3, verses 19 through 24. 1 John chapter 3, verses 19, he said, And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before Him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and know it all things. So if any time in your life as a Christian, something condemns you, you know, something that you know that is not right and it condemns you and it condemns you in your heart, he said, know also that God is greater than that. So his condemnation is even greater. <laughs> if your conscience is displeased with him, much more he is displeased with it, right? And so he said, he said if, our con if our heart condemn us, he said, God is greater than our heart, and he knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby know we that he abided in us by the Spirit which he had given us. And so that is a springboard in which I want to use for tonight's Bible study, talking about God being on the inside of us. And making that connection with God is what gives us the ability to be courageous. Because when we know God is for us, and we know God is not condemning us, and we know that we have confidence in God, what courage do we have? Amen? You know, when we have that, 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 um, that courage or that confidence in God, we can go out there like, like Caleb and said, give me this mountain. Right? Because we have confidence. Caleb was a man that had confidence in God. And we can go out there and say, give me, give me this mountain. I want this mountain. It's mine. He stepped out and do it. And so we need that kind of confidence. And uh, we're talking about courage to take action. Um, some quotes about courage. He said, what, what would life be if we had no courage to attempt anything? Right? So we need courage to do things. 
And that quote says, you will never do anything in this world without courage. It is the greatest quality of the mind next to honor. Aristotle said that. I think Winston Churchill said this one. He said, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And so we need that courage as a child of God to do God's will. We need that courage to be what God wants us to be. Like I said, the kingdom of God suffers when the people of God lacked courage to do His will. The kingdom of God suffers when we are not willing to stand for Him and stand with Him and be His voice, be uh, the one that will speak on His behalf rightly. The kingdom of God suffers when we don't have that courage to step out and take action and do the will of God. And we see this in, in many aspects of the Bible, Old and New Testament, that when the disciples and, and the followers of Christ lack co- courage to do things, it really hinders their progress and hinders the will and the work of God. But when they had that courage, God was able to use them. They were able, they were able to, God was able to work through them because they had the courage to let God use them, right? They had the courage to let God use them. And so that's what we need tonight. So we look at this here in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Like I said, we're talking about courage to take action. As a Christian, we're talking about how do we become courageous, right? How do we become courageous to do God's will? We have to remember this verse of Scripture right here. 1 John, and we all know it. It's been preached about, you read it, been shared so many times. But listen to what he said, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. He said, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. This is what gives us courage, is knowing who lives in us. All right? Knowing who lives in us, knowing that the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my shield, my buckler, my strong tower. The Lord going before me, as the Bible said, the disciples working and God working with them. Knowing that God is on our side, God is in us, and that He is greater than all, all of our enemies. The Bible said, in nothing, be terrified by your adversaries. Because the God that we serve is much more greater than Satan. He created the devil, not, not the devil, devil, in the sense as, you know, he created Lucifer, <laughs> who became the devil, right? But he, he's the one that, he's, he's, no one is, is, is equal to God. No one can match the power of God, you know. And if that great and mighty and honorable and wonderful, loving, holy God lives in us, uh, that's what gives us the courage. That's what gives us the courage to, to do what God wants us to do. And so courage comes when we make a strong connection with the God that lives with us. That's the point I want to drive home tonight. You know, courage to stand, right? Courage to do God's will. But where does the courage come from? It comes when a person is in, 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 in connection with their God. When a person has made some form of connection with God, that's where the boldness that's where the courage, like I said, that they took knowledge of the disciples when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. They took knowledge that they had what? Been with Jesus, right? They had been with Jesus. They, they didn't take knowledge that, uh, that you know, they've been studying or praying or any such thing. Or that, that's not what they mentioned. But it said they took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. They were connected to Christ. And when we have that connection with God, we have that relationship with the Lord, there will be a certain amount of courage that comes because we all, from time to time, we all feel, feel that fear, right? We're human, right? It's a spirit. Fear, the Bible said, God had not given us the spirit of fear. And so it tells us what fear is. It's a spirit, right? It's a spirit. It's, a, it's a something that can take hold of somebody, Right? Just like uh, the Holy Spirit can take a hold of us if we let Him, right? You know, remember the Old Testament or the Bible says when Samson, he said the Spirit of God will come upon him, right? And he will get out there in power and destroy the enemies. The Spirit of God came upon Elijah and he outran that chariot. You know, as the Spirit of God can take hold of somebody, so that spirit of fear can take hold of someone also. And sometimes even doing something simple of, 
asking a question or ordering a food or, or dealing with somebody about a problem can become something that cripples you because you're afraid or I'm afraid to deal with it. But when you've been in presence with God and you've been praying, you have that connection with God, there's a certain boldness and courage that comes from that. There's a certain boldness that comes from it when you understand that the God that lives in you is greater than anything else and anyone else. And you know he's in you and you've been in fellowship with him. You have confidence with him. Your heart is not condemning you. There's a certain courage that comes along with that that moves you to do what God wants you to do. And so courage comes from that connection with God. Amen. We see uh, Moses in the Old Testament. God wanted Moses to go into Egypt and faced all his fears, <laughs> right? Because that's the reason why he ran from Egypt, you remember? He was afraid of Pharaoh and what Pharaoh will do to him because he slayed that Egyptian man. He ran for his life. And now God <laughs> is telling Moses, time for you to go right back into Egypt. And he did not want to go. He was afraid. And he began to make excuse like many of us do. Oh, God, I can't even speak. I can't even put two words together. I'm a mumbler. <laughs> I'm afraid to lift my voice and talk. God, I can't do it. And God just took that fear out of him. He said, who made man's mouth? <laughs> he, said, he, said, he said, Moses, you go, and I will go with you. All right? and, and as Moses was there in the backside of the desert, he saw that burning bush. He saw the miracle of his hand turn, to snow, turn, turn leprous and then healed again. He saw the, the, the rod turn to a serpent. So with God's revelation of the burning bush and, and the miracles and God's reassurance, reassurance and comfort that he was going to be with him, Moses made that connection with God. He made that connection with God and, and then we, we began to read after that, he went into Egypt and... Uh, in the beginning, you know, he felt the fear a little bit when he stood before Pharaoh. But as soon as he began to make that connection with God even more when he stood before Pharaoh and Aaron's rod destroy the rods of all the magician that was there. And, and, and God told Moses to go back in again and stand before him. It was a different story then. We saw the transformation. He was no longer afraid. He was no longer timid. Man, he was a threat to Pharaoh after that. You know, he boldly stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and said, God said, let my people go. And he said, if you don't, right, if you don't, I'm going to turn this water into blood. If you don't, I will call for this plague, and I will call for that plague. And, and God was magnifying Moses in the eyes of Pharaoh and all his people. But we saw this shift from being scared, being timid, being afraid, to boldly standing before Pharaoh and declaring God's will. It comes from when he was in, he made a connection with God. You know, and that's what gives us courage when we make that good connection with God. When we been like, say, when our heart is not condemning us, we have confidence, right? When we know that greater is he that lives in us than anything else that can come our way, it gives us courage. When we know that that God will stand with us and for us, it gives us that, that certain boldness and courage to move forward with what, we, with what God wants us to do. And so we're talking about courage to take action. Moses took action, courageously took action, after he made a, a good connection with God. We see the same thing, the same thing happen with Gideon. God called him to deliver Israel from the Midianites, and once again, we find that he had some excuses also. Oh, who am I, God? I'm the least of all my father's house. I'm a very poor man. I'm nothing. I'm a nobody. God knew that. <laughs> right? God wasn't blind to who he was. God knew who he was. But God was showing him, if you can connect with me, you can have the courage. If you can make a connection with me, you can have the courage to do what I call you to do. He needed some assurance, and in his case, he needs some reassurance. Because he put the fleece before the Lord, and, and you know the story, and I go through the whole thing. And when God answered him that way, he's like, oh, this is good, this is wonderful. Well, let me try another way. Reverse it now, Lord Jesus. Or he talked to God at that time, right? 
And so God gave him the assurance, but he made, he made the connection through laying that fleece before the Lord. God answered him both times. God sent the angel, spoke to him. So he made that connection, you know, with the messenger of God. And then when he asked for the miracle, God showed him the miracle. And so he made another connection with God. And when he went to, to choose his army, God spoke to him again. He was making that connection. And so God chose 300 soldiers and Gideon to go take on one of the mightiest army in the, in, in the close by to Israel at that time, the Midianites. The one that were destroying them, thousands upon thousands of people. Gideon and his 300 men went out there and God gave them the victory. But if you notice what happened after the victory, right? After the victory of that battle, the Bible said Gideon became a mighty man. He became their leader. He became a judge to rule over the people. And he had courage. You know, he went from a nobody <laughs> to a somebody, right? Because he made that connection with God. And he was, the people saw courage in him. And they said, Gideon, rule over us. And he said, no, I don't want to rule over you. And they made him the ruler nevertheless because they saw that he had courage to be a leader, a captain in the army, for the army of Israel, and they made him their leader because he had courage. Not he had courage. But that courage was not there in the beginning, is what I'm trying to say. Just for like Moses, that courage wasn't there in the beginning. Is after he made the connection with God, and he understood that God was with him, and God would stand by him, he had courage to go on. And man, you read about Moses, that was a bold man. He did some real incredible things for God, but it was not like that in the beginning. You read about Gideon. He stood for God. He took action. He fought the, the, for, for the armies. He fought with the armies of Israel for the people of Israel. He led them and everything very courageously, but it wasn't there in the beginning. It's only after they made that connection with God. That's when they were, they were able to take action. So the Bible study is about courage. Last week was courage to stand up for God and, and to speak and to represent Him properly. Tonight's Bible study is courage to step out and do what God wants us to do. Don't let fear cripple us. We can't let that. You know, I read the statement many years ago. I don't know, some book somewhere. I don't even know the name of the book. Can't give credit to anybody right now. But it says you got to feel, feel the fear and do it anyways. <laughs> I go through that all the time, every time. I told Brother Snorton Saturday morning, man, our heart were pounding. We went to this one place doing some soul winning. <laughs> I said, let's do it. Let's feel the fear. Let's do it anyways. Let's go for it. Right? And we did. We did. We did the work of the Lord and, and praise God. But the fear was there. Right? The fear was there. No doubt the fear was there. But we felt it and we did it anyway. We did it anyway. Right? And that's what courage is when you know you've been with God and you pray and say, God, I need to do this. This needs to be done. And this is for your glory, for your honor, Lord. Help me. And you make that connection. You make that connection. You can have the courage to do it. So courage to take action. It, it can happen with, uh, for all of us, but we have to make sure that we make that connection with God first. When we make the connection with God, God will infuse us. He'll, he will infuse us with, uh, with, with faith, with confidence, he will infuse us with boldness. He will give us the wisdom we need, the guidance and favor that we need to accomplish the mission. God will help us. But we got to make sure we make that connection with him. And when we do, we will see there's a certain courage that takes over our life. We will not be ashamed to, or afraid, ashamed and afraid, to be a good representative of Christ. Amen. We'll not be ashamed to stand out and be the example God wants us to be. We'll not be ashamed to do the will of the Lord. We'll not be ashamed or afraid to speak and to, and to tell people what God wants. Not what they want to hear, but what God wants them to hear. Because that may be the last thing we tell them. It may be the last time we speak to that individual. The last time we have that opportunity to give them the truth that God wants them to hear. And so we have to be conscientious of that, uh, that when we speak for the Lord, it could be, very well be, 
their last message. I've done that. I've, I've sat with people right across, sitting at the table, talking to, talking to the guy, young, young guy. That was the last time. <laughs> that was the last time I ever speak, speak, spoke to him. After that, he was gone, taken into eternity. But it happens. We don't know. We don't know. We have to be conscientious of what God wants us to do and have the courage to do it and don't be afraid. Amen. The last thing we're going to share tonight about, about this um, courage to take action. And you know that um, story about Esther, how she had to put her life on the line. And this one, like one of the greatest stories in the Bible. Very courageous. I still can't find the book of Esther in my Bible, so I'm going to read it up there. <laughs> it's in my Bible. I know it's in there. I saw it today. I read it today. But I had stuff on the line from it that I wanted to share. But um, I think one thing was prayer prepares us for the battle. I just can't locate Esther right now. Where is Esther? <laughs> She's hiding. But the, the connection and the courage that she needed. You know, a lot of times we tell people, pray about it. Pray about it, right? We say, pray about this. And the reason why we say this is because sometimes, you see, prayer, prayer helps us to make a connection, to step out with courage to do God's will. It's not necessary that uh, we pray so that God can move on our behalf all the time. That, that's part of it. But it's not only so that we can get God to move or get God to act. Prayer prepares us for the opportunity to courageously step out and do what God wants us to do. And that's the reason why you see a lot of times in Scripture people are praying. You remember when, um, when, when uh, Nehemiah went before the king to get permission to go rebuild the walls of Jerusalem? He prayed and asked God to give him the, you know, the favor and stuff like that. And so the courage comes when, when we pray. We make that connection with God to do God's will. And so Esther had to go stand before the king, and I'll probably read it up there. He said then, Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. And neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast, fast likewise and so will I go in unto the king which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. And that's the end of it there. <laughs> but you see what happened, right? She needed to take action for God. God needed this woman to take action. God needed this woman to do something for him, something she had never done before, something she didn't even think she could do. And her uncle Mordecai helped her out, inspired her, challenged her, threatened her. <laughs> you are here uh, to the kingdom for such a time as this. Don't think you will escape. Because this command is to kill all Jews. When they find out, when they find out that you are a Jew, they'll take your life too. And your father and, and, and everybody else, uh, your, your, your relatives, they'll take, they'll take their lives too. And so the way that she gained the courage to go before the king was she made that com connection with God. Right? She said, three days and three nights, let's fast, let's pray. Three days and three nights, uh, let's fast and pray. Let's, uh, let us, let us um, go before God. Let's make the connection. Without that connection... It would have been very difficult for her to have that confidence, that courage to step out and put her life on the line. You know, she had it made up in her mind. She said, if I perish, I perish. But, but she, she went to God, make the connection. 
make the connection with God. And when she did, when she realized, wait a minute, you know, I'm fasting, I'm praying, the people are fasting, they're praying, we're making this connection for God. The Bible says she went out and she did what she never thought that she could do. She laid her life on the line and God gave her favor. Amen. So I'm talking about courage to do God's will. Courage to take action. Moses had to take action. Gideon had to take action. Uh, Esther had to take action. And many other instances in the Bible where people had to take action for God. But the way they did it was they need the courage. And the way to get the courage was they, they made that connection with God. You know, and if there's things in our life that are still challenging for us to do, big or small, I guarantee you, if we make that connection with God, if we make that connection with the Lord, we, we connect with Him in prayer and fellowship and, 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 and really, you know, focusing on, on connecting, connecting with the Lord and knowing that we're making that connection, there will be a certain courage that God will place in our heart that we, will not even, that we didn't even think was possible. And not only will He give us courage, but He will give us wisdom and He will give us faith and He will give us understanding he will give us grace and favor and all the things that we need to accomplish that thing that He wants us to do in our life at any moment, whenever, whenever, whenever we need to do that. But when we make that connection, the Lord will give us the courage to do it. And we need that courage because when we don't have the courage, God's kingdom on earth, not in heaven. He's good in heaven. Nobody can mess with that. But His kingdom on earth, on earth suffers when the people of God lack courage to do His will. Whether it's to speak on the behalf of the Lord or to take action and do something for Him, we all need that courage. And we can all get that courage. If you remember the verse that I share with you, the greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. The God that lives in me is greater. Amen? The God that lives in me is stronger. The God that lives in me is, is better than anything else and anyone else. And He is able to give me the courage to do what He wants me to do. And with that, we'll close the Bible study out for tonight. For all you who join us online, God bless you. Have courage in the Lord. Do God's will. Make that connection with the Lord. And for us here, let's continue to be courageous and serve the Lord. Amen. Father, thank You for the Word of God. We pray giving You glory and honor. I pray that You will give us the courage to do Your will and to serve You and to stand for You and to step out in action and do Your will. I give praise and glory to you as God that you will use this word for your glory tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.